I'm wearing the same things because I recorded this week and last week all at the same time. So this week, as promised, I'm going to do a studio tour and I'm going to go through the whole studio in a lot more detail, talk about where I've put things, what's in some of my new drawers, and hopefully you'll get more of an idea of where I want to work every day. It is very different from what it was before, especially with my things like colored pencils and I've moved all my watercolors. Some things are still the same as they were last year when I did a tour and you might want to check that one out as well just to see how the studios changed over time. I mean I am forever moving things around anyway so I don't expect it to even stay like this forever but I think now most of my stuff at least has a lot more chance of actually staying where it is because it is in a much better location than what it was before so let's get into it i'm really excited to show you all the new things i have in my studio all right starting off in my office i've probably mentioned it before but basically my studio consists of the studio an office and a bathroom and it's attached to the back of our house so it used to be a granny flat this was a bedroom with an ensuite bathroom and then I've got the kitchenette and it was a living room the kitchenette and living room are now my studio and the bedroom is my office so coming in here you can see it had wardrobes and everything for being a bedroom and down here I've got this trolley which has basically just got things like CDs, you know, if I need to burn a DVD or something like that. It's got all of my glasses, cases, tissues for when I get sniffles and also just some notebooks and my recording gear for the computer when I'm making these videos and just, you know, all those sorts of exciting things. This is my filing cabinet, which I've got a lot of old stuff that I really need to get rid of. Documents and bills and all that fun stuff. And I'll just give you a quick little peek in here, even though I have not really sorted these cupboards out. But basically for now, I do still have quite a lot of photography stuff, which I'm just not entirely sure what I want to do with. It's kind of too expensive just to throw it out. But at the same time, I don't know that anyone really wants to buy it. So I'm just hanging on to that for now. And I also have quite a lot of empty cases and bins and things which I might do something with later when I actually decide what I want to put in here. I've got just, you know, letter posting stuff. And on this side, this is where I had a lot of my crafting stuff which is now actually in the other room, although there are still a few things like that measuring tape which I found later on. In here I've just got a bunch of writing pads and things like that and all of my little folders and just stuff that I will need to sort through at a later time but I've just put there now because I can close the doors and not think about it. I just have folders and other miscellaneous stuff in that box of things is stuff from 20 years ago or more that I just really don't know what to do with you know it's just like trinkets and things that I had when I was living overseas and I've also got one of my really large tripods down there which I'm totally keeping even though I don't have all of the camera equipment at the moment and up the top is a mess of camera bags and other sorts of backpacks and things some of these I will probably end up donating as well but they're all just up there out of sight and out of mind for now so basically in that cupboard I actually have all of my old studio lights that I'm hoping to sell but at the moment it's very difficult to sell things so they're fine in there for now. <laughs> That's kind of a really difficult part of the cupboard to get into anyway. And then up the end there I've got all of our wrapping paper for Christmas and things like that and just some of my sewing gear. Actually let's open it. This door has got a door stop there because the cat keeps closing it so I'll just have to take the door stop out and then I can get into that corner. So in the corner of the cupboard is junk that I haven't sorted then I have my sewing machine and sewing box because sometimes I do actually get the sewing machine out. I am pretty hopeless at sewing but every so often I decide to try. I went through a whole crochet phase and so I've got a lot of walls and things which I keep in there. I've got some cross stitch stuff in there and then there's all of our wrapping paper and up the top I've got a few old pencil tins which are actually spare and also I've got my Prismacolor pencils in a different box so this is just for safekeeping up here. This is where I actually kept all of my other tins but I pulled them out and put them in drawers with the pencils back in them. Okay back over here I've got my computer I recently upgraded it because my other one was just running really slowly and wasn't rendering videos out very well. Sometimes it would just completely crash. So I had to upgrade all of the parts in it. But my husband is really good with computers and so he 
managed to pick out a whole bunch of things for me and we got it custom built so it's actually much cheaper to do it that way when it's just a regular PC you can just pull parts out and replace them so it's much cheaper than having to replace an entire thing I've had this monitor for years I used it for my photography and it's a really good one over here I've got my a3 printer and scanner which I use most of the time now and in this corner I've got my old Epson printer and scanner which is an A4 size and for some reason it just is refusing to accept the ink that's in there it says does not recognize ink and I have no idea so I'm going to see if I can fix it otherwise it might just have to go that's the trouble with printers is as soon as you use them after a while they just die and it's so frustrating and then I've just got a few other things I've got my glasses in case you're wondering what this is it's a squirty bottle because Gandalf especially keeps getting up on this and because it's getting so heavy this is quite bendy he jumped onto that and the whole thing bent down and I thought it was going to completely snap off so I've really been trying to dissuade him from going up here and so if he gets ideas I give him a little shake of the bottle or a squirt if he refuses to listen to the shake <laughs> but he's usually pretty good once he sees that squirt bottle coming out he knows not to do what he was about to do and then I've got up here a bunch of things in there which I haven't thrown away or sorted I've got quite a lot of stationary items and other collectibles and things just up here this corner I have not yet fully sorted so I'll do something with that I hung a couple of my artworks and I've got my little red desk here which has got an old computer monitor and that's my old computer tower which you can see we've actually harvested parts of that to put into the new one so we didn't have to buy everything brand new because some things like the CD drive and stuff work perfectly fine and eventually I will be taking all of the keyboards and monitors away and using this as a desk but for now it's okay and I've just got a few other little officey bits and pieces up there underneath my office desk I have another set of Alex drawers these are the first ones I ever had and in there I've got all sorts of stuff that probably could be sorted this is another area that I haven't done for quite a long time but I've got you know lots of line notepads and books and <laughs> more notebooks I've also got just cables and stuff because that keeps them all together some old business cards and my label maker I keep in here so I know where it is and don't lose it this is sort of my A4 and A5 printer paper and then down the bottom I've got the A3 printer paper so an exciting set of drawers there and coming around we've got the bright window which is just making the camera lighting go all sorts of crazy I've got a few bits and pieces here which I might end up chucking up the cats have been sitting on these rugs lately so I just figure I'll leave them there for now it's a bit messy but I can easily tidy this away so I'm not too worried about it now I will show you my bookshelf so this is probably my favorite area of the office and that's all of my books on my bookshelf these are all my art books and I've managed to fit in all of my coloring books quite a lot of journals and a few other little decorative items like for instance the book lover bookends which I've had for years I think I got them when Borders was around I mean they haven't been around for many years now <laughs> I've got quite a lot of gemstones and things which I collect in here and I don't really know what else to do with them so <laughs> they're kind of holding up these books at the moment so they are also working as a makeshift bookend yay <laughs> and these are a lot of sketchbooks and notebooks that I have some that I am using and others which have not been used yet then I've got up here these are my coloring books and the sand timer which I got for a photography shoot but I just like it so much I had to keep it and a few other coloring books that's the one that I was given by a lovely viewer so I really do need to maybe do something with that as well hopefully one of these days and then up the top I've got all of my much smaller sketchbooks and also the antiquarian sticker book the box that my Primrosia sketchbook has come in and another sketchbook that I just finished if you remember I did a video decorating that and doing a tour through and then I've just got my CD case who has CDs in this day and age I do <laughs> all right moving on I'll just go past the bathroom the bathroom it really could do with being renovated and it's probably the first one I'm going to do like all three bathrooms in our house need a good renovation but I would start with this one because this one is the guinea pig one it doesn't really matter if I make a mess of it I mean the, the floor tiles are pretty gross and everything's kind of that icky 80s yellow color and then I've got one of my paintings hanging there because we ran out of space 
So yeah, it's not very exciting, just a little bathroom. Okay, now I shall actually get into the studio itself, which if I open the door, we can take a look at the length of it. All right, so let's get into here. Apologies if the lighting is not very good. What I really do need to get is a light here, but you can see that's where the smoke alarm is. So I'm not too sure what we're going to do there, but it would just be so ideal to get a light to hang there. Maybe I'll need to get a wall sconce or something. I have this wall where I originally had these acrylic photographs and I managed to peel off the photographs eventually because they weren't really relevant and I didn't want to throw them all out because they cost a lot and I've put in some watercolour paintings that I did a few years ago. Pretty much that's all that's on this wall. I used to have that Billy bookcase here which was groaning with books and everything. Now it's just a blank wall and I'm thinking I kind of might want to paint it so let me know in the comments if you want to see me paint a mural or something on this wall because I do have ideas for that. And then coming in over here is all of my lovely storage which I'm so happy I've got. I have not fully organized it yet but at least everything is in a drawer and it's just so much easier to deal with when you can just pull out one drawer at a time as opposed to having just mess everywhere. Oh boy that was hard to deal with. I need to find a nail to hang in the wall so I can hang this little picture. Look at it, it needs to go there. That's the one I just did recently on the black canvas and I just think it will go really nicely with my other kind of gothic things. I did show this in my previous tour but I ended up making this a couple of years ago. It's one of those old-fashioned 70s wooden cases and I ended up painting it all black and I had just all this junk. I made that bookcase and there was a lady who lives nearby who sells a lot of dollhouse furniture so I actually ended up buying quite a few little bits and pieces to put in here from her and yeah I just really love how this came out it's one of my favorite things I've ever made I've also kept just a couple of items out here this is a really nice vintage container that I bought a while ago and I think it's really pretty and this is the heart-shaped box that Nick gave me for Valentine's Day so of course that has to stay out <laughs> and then I also have this little coaster from the Orkney Islands when we were there a few years ago and also this terracotta warrior statue because they had a terracotta warrior exhibition in 2019 and I'm so glad we went to it what else have I got a couple of artworks I did a few years ago and a few more paintings that is probably the most expensive frame that I have because the skull painting was an awkward shape I had to get it custom made so I think the frame cost me something like $75 and oh, I hate paying money for frames I really do normally what I do is buy the frames first and then do the artworks to fit into them and it's so much cheaper but yeah that skull is staying on there unless someone pays me good money for it because that frame costs so much and there's a few other little artworks that I've done little oil paintings these ones up here are some of the first oil paintings I ever did so they're not very good. I had them hanging on the wall in the living room for quite a long time but I decided they needed to come in here and I did kind of want to chuck them out at one point because they're pretty crappy but you know it's it's kind of cool to have your old artwork hanging up as well and then some of these other ones I've done over the years I think my favorite is probably the rose it's just simple and Nick made the frames for me and I painted them <laughs> so I really like having those. So in this little cabinet I've got all of my vintage bottles because I had a whole collection of them and I did collect them for quite a long time. I've kind of stopped doing it because I just don't really have any more room for them. So what I've done is I put all of these in there and I will now only collect bottles if they are really really awesome. And in the top shelf I've also got a few other bits and pieces that just sort of looked like they would go quite nicely in here. Up here I've got the thinker and a rose that I made, those plasticky puzzles that you put together and coming down here I've got these little wooden drawers which at the moment don't really have much in them other than some photographic samples and <laughs> oh my god there's a lollipop in here which I used as a prop for a photo shoot that's pretty funny I think I'll need to throw that out I don't think that will be edible and then in there I've got just some empty drawers so I've got room to put some things in here these ones are also needing to be sorted there's just a bit of random junk I've got whiteboard markers and just other things that I have not decided whether I'm keeping yet I might end up giving some of these things away but as you can see there's a lot of just empty drawers here 
This is a vintage wooden tool chest that I got from the antique market years ago and Nick and I sanded it all and varnished it all so it looks really good and then we got these nice fluffy drawer liners which I originally had my coloured pencils in but I just grew out of this one really fast as you can imagine. So yeah I have a whole thing full of pens here and one day I just need to go through and see if they work or not and just get rid of all of the ones that don't work. So yeah that's a fun and exciting job for a rainy day. This one's just got more miscellaneous items. This was just a little painting I did with some new paints that I was testing out and I will get to those at a later time. There's also some of the artworks that I've been sent by other people and I'm keeping them in this drawer for safekeeping. I also have a couple of old mobile phones in here that I kind of don't want to throw away but it's hard to know what to do with them. I mean you can throw them away to those recycling places but they cost so much money when you buy them it just seems really hard just to chuck them out so I do kind of keep my old mobile devices. It's nice looking back at them too. This one's just got a booklet in it which actually I can put in a different drawer because down here I have a drawer that is full of old swatches and booklets of products and things like that. I have not sorted that one. That one is to do at a later time. All right, so over here are also some bits and pieces that I still need to sort out. These I used to have in my office, but now they are empty and I don't know if I'm going to keep them or just recycle them. I've just got my sticky tape up here because I'm forever looking for sellotape. These were in a different spot, but Gandalf managed to pick this up in his mouth and he carried it across the studio and left it on the floor. So I put it up there because he's less likely to pick it up. It's these really cool little test tubes <laughs> and I don't know what to do with them, but I just think they're really neat. So I'm keeping those. And down here I've got some various wire bound sketchbooks, which are a bit too big to put anywhere else. I've got a lot of little cheap watercolour pads which I tend to do swatches and things on and I've just put them all in here because it's just easy to find them. So most of the things in here are student grade, there's some craft paper. Down here are those gel plates that I had lost for quite a long time and then I found them all. I also have some of those cutting boards. Over on this one I've just got a whole bunch of small notebooks and things. There is a shop called Milligram and they had an outlet sale and they were just getting rid of all these really beautiful and expensive notebooks for so cheap so I ended up getting a whole bunch of them. Up here is that little box I decorated with the BB Craft mermaid vinyls and I'm not sure what to do with that either so that's just sitting there. And here I've got a box of half pans and little magnets and things. It's a bit messy and I might decide I'm going to move these but they're all contained for now. Now all of these drawers are pretty much finished and these have all of my crafting things so I've got feathers, jewellery making bits and pieces and then I've got wood embellishments, sort of metal things and steampunk stuff. I've got lace, pliers, crafty tools, embossing. I recycled my greeting cards so I basically went through all of the cards that we had and I've cut off pictures and things and I chucked out most of them. I figured things like that would be good in art journals so I've got all of that organised. There's also some more artist cards and other ephemera and just stuff I just don't know what to do with but I don't want to throw it out just yet. Down here I have mandatory glitter, gelatos which I should do a video on one day, some stencils and stickers, I've got book binding tools and cloth bags and things like that, leather swatches. I do have three drawers here that don't have anything in so I will decide what's going in there at a later time. Of course these sticker things will not peel off, it's so annoying. And in the last one I've got you know little mini bottles and skewers and things that I tend to use to mix paint and shape cutters, scissors, double sided tape, some washi tape here. I have washi tape everywhere <laughs> but this is my larger washi tape and the ones that I'm currently using. I've got more cutters and things you know little knives and blades and stuff like that some of my pencil sharpeners that will fit in there, a few erasers, I haven't got many in here because I moved them somewhere else and I don't actually remember where they are so they are in there for now and I've got a few small rulers and things in there, I have my larger rulers in a different area. Now down the bottom here quite a lot of these have not been sorted or I'm actually going to take things out. Over here I've got some old photo albums and things like that, I've also got a whole bunch of ribbon and crafty supplies. In this one I've got my laminator and guillotine. It does not quite close because that handle is poking out but it's the most out of the way I can do for now. These four drawers are basically full of junk and I need to sort. <laughs> and over this side 
I've got things like stamping, I think, in that one. Crystal beads and sequins. Look, I've even labelled them with my label maker. All of my origami paper and cardstock. And then I've got some scrap paper and other things in that one. So it's nice having them all in here. Okay, so because I've got carpet and lino here, there is a bit of a step down, which is why we didn't push all of these up against those ones. So there is a bit of a gap here. But this is really great for putting all of those picture frames that just do not go anywhere. And I have a little pair of slippers there that I really need to throw out because they are worn to death but they're just sitting there for now that is the biggest and most difficult thing to find homes for are the picture frames directly opposite my drawers here is the little kitchenette and ideally it would be nice to take this whole kitchenette out and maybe just put like a small one across the back wall but this one comes out in an L shape and so I've just got to live with it for now because it is just a big expense to have to rip it all out and I just couldn't face that at the moment so it's just part of the furniture and it's actually quite a useful bench for putting big things on and making a mess. I've got some plastic on here which you can see has been well used. Over on this side I've just got a few cups and other little bits and pieces which I am either going to get rid of or paint or do something with and then I've also just got my little coffee maker and a fridge I've got my tool bag up here because I'm forever grabbing things out of it I've also got my fish food and the water conditioner which has fallen over so no doubt Gandalf has been up here lately <laughs> and I've also got my Michelangelo corner the David and the creation of Adam which I painted a couple of years ago one little plant which is struggling a bit at the moment and I might need to replant that moss but it's okay there for now I think in these drawers I have things like my tools and a lot of things like paint rags old plastic bottles and glass bottles and things which I do use quite a lot of so like for example I have all of my plastic containers in there and a whole bunch of glass containers in here so these are really handy for all sorts of projects and I did want to keep those I've got like a bunch of aprons in there and a drop sheet I think safety gear so masks and gloves and things like that for when I need to use those tissues and paper towels and all those sorts of things that are super useful to have in the studio and then I have a whole bunch of ornaments and things here that I really want to decorate and do stuff with over here is my fish tank at the moment I've just got a small school of little fishies in there and they're hanging out because they've seen me they're in that corner because that's where I feed them there we go it's about time they were fed today so <laughs> just give them a little bit of fish food so I feed them every day and if we go away I will put a feeder block in the bottom there and that will keep them going so yeah they're pretty easy as long as you do a water change every week or two they are happy and they're very easy to keep so I enjoy them I've got a few little bits and pieces here that I do sort of need to get rid of or do something with I'm just not too sure what to do with them so I think they're fine there for now coming around I keep my light pads up on top of this set of drawers I've got my little koala here and in here I have my really nice cotton watercolor papers some of the watercolor pads and other loose watercolor paper I've also got Upo paper all of my really nice drawing pads some graph paper and just some random printer paper and stuff like that I've also got my Sennelier calligraphy set because I just don't really know where else to put that so I think it's quite nice in the drawer and it stays nice and safe in there now this set of drawers I'm really excited about this is the new set of Alex drawers that I got and in here are all of my watercolor paints it was quite fun filling it up now I may change this over time because what I've done is I've put the tubes and the tins in here but just so you can have a look at how beautiful they all look this is my entire Sennelier set which is all 98 colors and you can see I've got my Sennelier palettes and things in here as well is that not the most pleasing thing you've ever seen <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to keep the tubes like this I think that over time it's kind of taking up more space than it needs to but I just thought it looked so pretty and I really wanted to film it like this for the tours. I've got Daniel Smith and I also have rather a lot of these guys as well. A bit more than I had remembered actually. And then I've got my Daniel Smith palettes and things in there. I actually have a few new palettes and in a future video soon I am going to sort my Daniel Smith paints out because they are a bit all over the place. In the third one I've got Core and Schmincke. 
my Schmincke paints in particular are everywhere at the moment and I'm going to do a big video on that as well. So those are my tubes. Then I've got some new ones which I haven't even used yet. I haven't opened them. I've got my core things on this side and just a few other palettes and the super granulating ones for which I'm hoping to get the other two sets very soon but they're out of stock at the moment and they're due to come in in May. I've got M. Graham, Holbein, Art Spectrum and May Mary Blues. I have barely used the My Mary Blues. They were on sale because these are the old ones and they were getting rid of them in order to put the new design in. I also labelled inside rather than on the front because it just makes it look neater. <laughs> I've got Russian and Japanese here, which basically is all of my Japanese Kuretake planks, some of the Gansai Tambi pearl colours and the shiny ones. And I also have the St. Petersburg White Knights in a large and a smaller one. And I've also got my Shimmer Drops paints there for now. Jane Davenport's uh, Prima Marketing, although they're called something else now. They changed company or something, I don't really know. And then I've got just a few other little basic sets, student sets and some Australian ones, which I've really not used either. And I need to do a video on those too. So those are future videos in the making. Woohoo! <laughs> So yes, I'm so happy with this set of drawers. I really love having all my paints there. As I said, I had a lot of trinkets and ornaments and I've decided I wanted one main area to keep them. A random collection of things that I have gotten over time. Some of them, like this little Loch Ness monster I got when we went to Inverness. And then these little guys I got from somewhere overseas. I got that in Greece. This is the ashes of my cat Fatty, which I don't really know what to do with and I'm just keeping him there because he stays in my studio. There's one of those bottles that I decorated and the other one is down here holding all of my little glass flowers. The other jar I had, which is that green one, only held half of the flowers so I thought that this one would work really well and I think it looks really cool. This little tray here it's a bit dusty because I tend to use it to put my pencil shavings in. Mum gave me that last year if you remember my birthday haul this was in it. I also have this plane which I restored. We found it at an auction for five dollars and I just felt so sorry for it so I bought it home and tried to fix it up as best as I could. It's not perfect but I think it looks so much better. This was a studio prop but I just think it's really cool. There's my pot of broken dreams which I've had to fix because Gandalf knocked that over and smashed it and just a few other little dishes and things. So I'm trying to keep this area as clean as possible. I've also got a small CD player here. I think at some point I'd like to get one that's got the stereo in the middle and then the speakers with the remote control. Down here we have my homemade wooden paper holders because I have so many pieces of large paper that just would not go in any drawers. None of the Alex drawers would fit all of these things so I ended up actually just getting some MDF and hammering these together. Unfortunately you can see how much they are sagging over time because it had quite a lot of weight on it and they are kind of groaning a bit. This one you can see how much that has sagged. So I really should have used some thicker wood but then I couldn't lift it so <laughs> what are you going to do? But it keeps all of my big papers flat and dry and so I'm just keeping that for now. I've also sorted out some of my watercolour papers into different brands. I got a lot of this watercolour paper second hand on Gumtree. Someone was selling their uncle's deceased estate and they were an artist and they had all this paper it was everywhere and so dad and I went halvesies and yeah now I have it all I still haven't used it I've got a lifetime's worth of paper here going down here is my stuff to film drawer I've got a lot of drafts and reference photos that I print out I've got some of my finished artworks I tend to keep them in here and then at the end of the year I move everything into a folio bag. I've got smaller folios in there. I had a lot of my watercolour paper in here which is now in the other set of wire drawers and I've just got some of my cheaper papers. I've got A3 drawing books. I mean these <laughs> are so heavy. I've got all of my black paper in here for the moment. I was going to have a separate drawer for black paper but I kind of ran out of space over here so I've just popped it in with everything else. Over in this last lot I've got just smaller sketch books and things. These tend to be the cheaper ones that I have and the wire bound ones which I haven't put on my bookcase. I went through a whole Zentangle phase so that's in there and in the bottom drawer I now have my heat gun and my mini vacuum cleaner. I have one power bank on this side but annoyingly because my desk is in the middle I have to run one cable across to power my desk and all of the lights here. 
editing Becky here. This video is proving to be massively long so I've decided to split it into two parts and the second half of this will be released in my next video on Wednesday. So don't forget to subscribe to see my new videos. Thank you all so much for watching so far. I hope you've been enjoying it and I'll see you again in a few days. Swatch you later. Bye.